Yes. Well, first of all, let's make sure that people understand what the ASEAN is. The ASEAN is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, uh, made up of 10 countries in Southeast Asia that would add up to 650 million people, much bigger than the European community. Now, starting 2015, next year, that whole community will be completely a free market, free flow of goods, services, capital, very much like what happened in the European community in the last century. And so we will be telling investors here in Spain, and we're doing this in other countries, that if you take a look at this 21st century that is being called the Asian century, so people call the last century as the American century, but the American century really was made up of three powerful groups, US, EU, and Japan. So there were more or less three uh, equally powerful economies. Now, the world knows that these advanced countries right now are having difficulties growing after the Great Recession, and it will take a long time before they can have the growth that they had, if ever. But this century is going to see in Asia three equally powerful groups that would match the US, EU, and Japan for the last century. And these are China, India, and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Mm -hmm. So these are the three major markets that would be very attractive to investors of all over the world. And we are here to tell, especially European investors, that Asia is not China and China is not Asia. Because you tell Europeans about Asia, they just think of China. So we're telling them you're going to be, make a big mistake if you ignore this emerging free market. And especially, my message would be focus on the VIP, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines. We were able to get out of that crisis by introducing the usual monetary and fiscal policies that made up the so-called Washington Consensus. So it is not true that the Washington Consensus was totally wrong. You know, controlling our uh, fiscal deficits, controlling our money supply. So now all of us are enjoying very low inflation rate compared to what happened during the crisis. So that definitely is a lesson that all countries all over the world will have to learn. You cannot continue having fiscal deficits that are 10, 12 percent of gross domestic product and uh, be able to recover from the deficit. But the second lesson, which may not be transferable to Europe and other developed countries, is that we still have a young, growing population. We have not fallen into the de demographic winter. And so, and as I read it, most European countries will find it very difficult to recover because they have aging populations, and their uh, pension systems are under tremendous, tremendous stress, and not to mention the high rate of unemployment. And I think this is somehow a problem that will not be solved by the Asian solution. The Philippines is one of the highest, uh, the most rapidly growing economies. It's growing at about 7% every year for the last uh, three years, and it's expected to grow at that rate for the next 10 to 20 years. We've reached a tipping point in which we're able to solve our problems of the past when we used to be called the Sikh of Asia, but that is in the past. Now we are definitely among the so-called emerging markets that we'll see an expanding middle class and a tremendous increase, especially in consumer goods and services. These reforms have accumulated over 25 years, so it was not a sudden happening, uh, although 
um, much is being attributed to our present president. He is humble enough to say that he's just standing on the shoulders of all the presidents who came after him. So just to summarize what these reforms were, the mother of this present president, Cory Aquino, her contribution was to restore the democratic institutions that were destroyed by the dictator Marcos. So we are now definitely a stable democracy. Then the general came, his name was Fidel Ramos, he became the president. His uh, contribution was to privatize, liberalize, deregulate markets, very much like Thatcher and Reagan. Yeah. And then came the actor, who probably was not very popular outside, but he made a contribution by redirecting the efforts of the government away from the false industrialization we had in the past towards countryside and agriculture development. And then the lady president, Gloria Pogol Arroyo, invested a lot in infrastructure. And the final touch has been given by this present president, uh, Noy Noy Aquino, he's called popularly, and his main contribution is good governance. And so you, would, you put all of those reforms together, we explain why the Philippines is now attractive.